Welcome back to another fishing adventure. Big Lake Catfishing is the name of the game today. I'll tell you more about it as I get rigged up here. Not much wind today, but uh, I do want to cast out probably 50, 60 yards, so I'm going to put uh, some five ounce sinkers on here. As you can see I've got my bait uh, defrosting in the defroster there. I'll show you that in a second. And I haven't measured the water temp yet. I will do that in a little bit. It's real cold. I bet it's in the 40s. Shad is the bait today. This is a shad that I uh, harvested with a cast net a couple weeks ago. And it's been in the freezer. The leaves are so thick here. I don't dare put anything down because I'll never find it again. It's a good, uh, good opportunity to lose my bait scissors here today. And actually, I might not even... I don't think I'm going to cut... These are pretty small little shads, so I think I'm just going to put a whole shad on each hook. Um, but I am going to just put a couple little like, slices in the gut pocket there. Just so it'll leak out some stuff as it's sitting on the bottom, make it a little more attractive maybe. There's catfish of all sizes in this lake. Uh, no blues in this lake. We're talking about channel catfish here. All the way up to and including 20 pounds and all the way down to the smallest of eaters. And I'm going to be harvesting fish today if I can catch some uh, good eating size ones. For me, uh, eating size is probably like, you know, 7, 8 pounds or less. Between 2 and 6 pounds is probably my favorite size to keep. I'm hooking these um, behind the head instead of instead of through the snout. I know a lot of people, sometimes I hook it through the snout, but with these frozen shad, it seems like that head just pops off pretty easily. I've had a lot of times where I hook it through the snout and then, you know, a fish will come up and we'll grab this part and just the head will pop right off and the hook will stay with the head and the fish gets the body and I don't know, I've had better luck just uh, through the, right behind the head there. I always have people saying I should double hook the bait so I don't get my bait stolen and uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't get the bait stolen as easy, but I wouldn't catch as many fish either because the key, in my opinion, to catching, getting good hookups is to have as much of that hook exposed as possible. Catfish aren't picky eaters. They'll just gobble this up and this will just, the hook will go in with it and they won't even notice until they're getting pulled on and dragged into the shore. Oh my goodness, that is some icy water. It's got to be in the 40s. Just a simple slip sinker rig here. There's that five ounce sinker on the slide. Barrel swivel, about a 12 inch liter. And I think that's a four uh octopus hook there. And uh, you know, links for all my rods and reels and gear and stuff's in the description if you want to check it out. So yeah, 50, 60 yards out is where I want to put these. That's gonna put me in about five, six feet of water if I can get it out there. There's no wind. This is my first cast with these this rod and reel combo since uh, probably May. I haven't done any catfishing all summer long. This is my favorite time to catfish when the water's cold. That's better. That was a 50 yard cast. Okay, it's like 1.03 p.m. in the afternoon. Today's high is like 50 degrees. It's about 40 degrees right now. Fishing the warmest part of the day. That's what I usually do uh, in cold water situations. Tends to work out pretty good for me. Uh, check that water temp. It's been cloudy all morning, but uh, the sun is starting to peek out a little bit through the gaps in the clouds. Yeah, 43.7, cold stuff. Open water fishing days are numbered. Maybe a few days, maybe a week, before it gets down below 40 and probably find other things to do with my time. Not that you can't catch catfish in sub 4 degree water, it's just uh, so slow. I mean, it's just not worth my time to, to go do it. In my, it's just my opinion. You know, it's, a lot, it'd be, it's a lot like ice fishing without the ice. But I don't think there's been a shad kill yet at this lake. Uh, I, I don't see any dead shad. Uh, normally if, the, if we have a sharp temperature drop like we had over the past week, we went from daytime highs around 60 to daytime highs around like mid 30s. And, te and teens at night. So this water dr temperature dropped very rapidly over the last week and I haven't done any fishing during that time. And if I got here today and I saw a whole bunch of dead shad along the bank, I probably would have just turned around and went home because I don't know, in my, ex in my experience when that happens, the, the I mean, there's just so much food everywhere. 
um, the fish are have plenty to eat. They're they're full. But I but I haven't seen any dead shad, so that that's a good sign. I'm gonna fish for a while and see how it goes. Uh, apparently, if you're watching this right now, then uh, I guess something interesting happened. So <laughs> stay tuned. back a little earlier today it's about 10 45 in the morning and uh, we'll see how it goes uh, nothing yesterday no bites it was dead calm uh, got a little bit of wind today so I think I, I like that I think that's gonna help weather is about the same today uh, as yesterday but I'm fishing in a different spot as you can see um, the water depth that I'm fishing is the same as yesterday about five six feet maybe four to six um, the thing is this four to six feet water that I put my baits in are closer to deeper water so my baits are probably 60 yards or so from some 12 to 15 foot water where uh, the place where I was at uh, yesterday uh, probably 300 yards from that from that 12 to 15 foot water so closer to some deep water is the uh, tactic that I'm exploring today this one I'm gonna leave it for another minute and then I'll reel it in and check the bait that was another pull yeah <laughs> yep fish on fish on that was a subtle bite I'm glad I put it down and came back for it Feels like a real good fish. Wind's been picking up. It's probably, I don't know, it's bowing 10. I bet it's about 10 miles an hour probably. I do want some eater fish. I mean, I'll take trophies and eaters, but I don't know if this is an eater. It feels uh, pretty heavy. He's making a break for the left over here. Oh, he's running. Oh, it's a real good fish. Whoa! It's a green, big green channel cat. Wow, the light color on this fish is cool. Wow. Yeah, check out this pale, pale channel cat. I mean, it's not an albino. It's got, uh, well, I don't know. It's got pretty normal looking eyes, I think. They have pink, albino would have pink eyes, but it's just a really pale, uh, pale channel cat. A little pink in the tail there and in the fins. But I mean, it's almost like uh, kind of like flathead catfish color. Uh, wow, this is a really cool fish. I'm not gonna keep this one. I'm gonna put him back and uh, maybe catch him again another day. Really interesting. The pink and then the uh, the bronze, kind of goldish color. I'd estimate this is probably an eight pound fish, I suppose. Not a youngster. Back in the water. Yeah, this is a really cool looking fish. See ya. Good luck. Well, that's encouraging. That's, uh, I think I bet baits in the water about 45 minutes, and that's the first bite. So, all right, but at least there's one fish here today. Yeah, nice thing about cold water, I can just keep my bait out here. It's basically the same as a cooler, it's like 40 degrees. I am using slightly smaller. Um, chunks today um, than yesterday like uh, like that check the sharpness of that hook yeah it's still good Something's going on here. Yeah. This fish was just uh, just gobbled up that bait and was just hanging out. I 
don't know if he's trying to spit the hook or not, but he's hooked now. <laughs> it's about noon, a couple minutes after noon. Yeah, it's a good fish. I gotta go out and get him. Give me. Gotcha. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm after today. Five, six pound fish. Uh, like I said, it's about noon. It's finally, uh, I don't know, it's probably, the temp's probably in the upper 40s. Maybe we're hitting 50 by now, I don't know, but I think the water's warming up a little bit, maybe. This one's going on the stringer. This is a nice, uh, I think this is a female channel cat. I can't tell for sure. Greenish color kind of makes me think it's a, a female, but uh, yeah, five, six pounds. This is a good eating size. Good eating size if you if you want to do filet. Obviously, if you want to pan fry the whole fish, then uh, maybe a two three pounder would be better for that. But I'm gonna fillet these this size of fish. Nice. I'll put him out here a little farther so he doesn't have to get pounded by the waves the whole time. I'm just uh, gonna keep using the smallish uh, size baits here, just like that. And I can just do that three to five more times, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Live action. Fish on. Mm-hmm. That's just uh, <clears throat> munching on my lunch. I'm glad they take a break from my lunch to catch a fish. Feels like uh, a good eater sized fish again, I think. And as you can see, there's lots of rocks. And these, these kind of rocks go out into the water quite a ways too. So I really gotta keep tension on the line, keep them up in the, yeah. I don't wanna let them swim around, get wrapped up in some of those rocks. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, it's about 12.45, quarter to one. Another perfect eater size fish, a little smaller. Uh, yeah, it's been about a half an hour since that previous fish. This one, four or five pounds, perfect, on the stringer. And you know, as cold as this water is, there really is no reason to keep these fish alive and make them sit here and get beat up by the waves. I'm just going to go ahead and dispatch them now. This is the easiest way that I know of to dispatch a catfish. They're so tough. You can bonk them in the head with a rock all you want. That's not going to kill them. But if you cut this, this area right here in between their gills on their belly, cut straight across there, they'll bleed out really quickly. I, li I like use, using these scissors. There we go. And that their uh, main blood vessels that's, that uh, come off of their gills right in there I just cut that put them back in the water and then they'll bleed uh, bleed out and that uh, dispatches the fish and it bleeds the fish at the same time and as you can see that uh, that technique works nicely it doesn't take long at all and they, they bleed out very thoroughly but yeah it's only almost it's about one o'clock I'm gonna fish for a couple more hours probably see if I can get maybe uh, three or four more of those good eater sized fish on the bank today put some in the freezer Stay tuned. Bite, bite, bite. Yep. Fish on. It's been slow. It's been almost an hour with no fish. And I was just standing up. I was gonna go grab my fillet knife and uh, go over and clean those two fish and head for home. But here I am. Oh, big splash on the surface out there. I think I got a bigger fish here. I think I got a trophy fish here. This is not a small fish. It's hard to tell. It could be a 10 pound or it could be a 20 pounder because it's cold water. They don't have a lot of fight in them. Definitely got a lot of weight here. I don't think this is going to be an eater. Right in front of me here. Oh yeah. Come here. Come here. No, don't get my other line. Oh, it's a giant. It's a 
giant. I'll get the scale out for this one. Yeah, that's a 14, 14 pounds, 13 ounces. Yeah, what a beast. That's basically a 15 pound fish, 14 pounds, 13 ounces. This is a beast. Didn't fight very hard. Like I said, it could have been a 10 pounder or a 20 pounder. It's something in between, but what a great day. I can barely hear myself talk because of the waves. Well, I thought I had a bite for a second. I'm gonna call it a day. Got two uh, fish I'm gonna bring home. This one's going back. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Back you go. See you in your 20 pounds. Yeah.